Hello everyone, I am Professor Anish Vora and I welcome you all in this video lecture. In this video lecture, we will study about the principle of electric arc welding and different types of electric arc welding. Let us start with the principle. In electric arc welding, arc is struck between the joints of two metal pieces and electrode. First, electrode is brought in contact with the metal piece like a short circuit and then it is taken back to generate the arc between electrode and workpiece. Air between electrode and metal joint gets ionized and become conductive and then an arc is struck. Because of arc, the heat produced is sufficient for fusion of metal joints. To maintain the arc, we require very less amount of voltage from 20 to 60 or 80 voltage only, but the current to maintain the arc require that is from 2000 ampere to 3000 ampere. In certain case, it can go beyond that also. Supply might be possible AC as well as DC. On cooling metal solidifies to form welded joint. Let us discuss different types of electric arc welding. Metal arc welding, carbon arc welding, atomic hydrogen arc welding, inert gas welding, gas metal arc welding. We will discuss each types briefly, its application and certain advantage and disadvantage one by one. In case of metal arc welding, metal rod itself melts and work as a filler matter to fill the cavities of the joint. The metal rod is made positive and the work piece is made negative, arc is generated, heat is produced and metal rod itself is a consumable metal rod and then it also work as a filler. Supply might be possible AC or DC. In the figure we can see the supply AC or DC power source. Here we have work piece and we have work cable. So work piece is made negative and electrode through the electrode holder it is made positive. If it is a metal arc welding then electrode itself is a consumable. If we use a carbon arc welding then the electrode is made of carbon and then sometime we require filler metal. Here arc is generated and after solidified it prepares a welding joint. Carbon arc welding. It is exactly similar to the metal arc welding but in case of carbon arc welding electrode is uh, made of carbon rod. Separate filler metal is required to fill the cavities of the joint. We use carbon arc welding for ferrous as well as non-ferrous application of the welding. Then next is uh, atomic hydrogen welding. In case of atomic hydrogen welding, arc is struck between two tungsten electrodes in the vicinity of the hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas is converted into atomic hydrogen and it passes through the welding chamber. Again, it comes to molecular form emitting large amount of heat. We use atomic hydrogen welding for stainless steel 
carbon steel and aluminum welding the next is uh, inert gas welding we use argon or helium as a inert gas and inert gas creates a shield around the workpiece and the advantage is welding becomes free from oxidation and then strong and without using of flux we use a inert gas welding for aluminum alloys magnesium and its alloys in the figure we can see the schematic diagram for the inert gas welding we have base metal and we have deposited metal we have welding zone arc struct consumable electrode and we provide shielding gas like argon or helium and uh, arc is generated that is uh, in the atmosphere of uh, inert gas now let us discuss quality of good weld suppose if we do not have following defects or the welding process is free from following defects then we can say the quality of the welding joint is good the first defect that is a poor fusion if the fusion between base metal and deposited metal is not proper then we call it poor fusion lack of proper fusion results in weak weld and the welded structure becomes highly unreliable the next defect that is the porosity if sufficient amount of time is not provided for releasing the trapped gases then it will generate the porosity in the joint porosity makes a weld leaky and especially when we use the welding for pressure vessel then this leakage might be very difficult and next defect that is cracks because of non uniform heating and cooling sometime cracks are generated in the joint and in a due course of time the cracks becomes more intense excess sulfur or phosphorus might be a reason for developing cracks we have certain other defects also like irregular height and width of the bits deviation from prescribed dimension unfilled craters deposition of slag and cracks so if our welding process is free from this type of defects then we can say the quality is good thank you for watching my video keep watching thank you very much